Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Who knew that Taylor Swift's music is so groundbreaking? As in a new study by UCLA and Caltech found that one of her era's tour concerts last year in August caused a small 2.0 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. That's the power of some 70,000 Swifty fans jumping up and down at the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. Nearby seismic monitoring stations found that the needle moved highest while the 34-year-old sang Shake It Off, with the next biggest jump coming during Love Story. Apparently this isn't even the first time that this has happened. Her other concert in Seattle, Washington is said to be responsible for a 2.3 magnitude earthquake as well. I guess this is the power that Democrats want to harness for Joe Biden's flagging campaign. So that was my stupid story submission for this week. Joining us now with his Everything is Stupid weekly wrap-up is author and supply chain consultant Jim Nels. Jim, thanks for being here tonight. What do you have for us this Friday? Hey, Kara. Do you know I am Tippy Point's greatest Swifty fan? I mean, she really moves me, if you get what I mean. But anyway, it's great to see you. And greetings from the Everything is Stupid studios here in the People's Republic of Chicago. Where I don't worry about squatters, my home is protected by Smith & Wesson. I'm back in the good old U.S. of A., and apparently none too soon. The country really did try to commit suicide while I was gone. It's been another crazy, stupid week. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. The Supreme Court had a very interesting week, and it wasn't good. The court declined Monday to rule if a very religious Indiana couple who believed children should be raised based on their sex at birth should have lost custody of their teenager, a transgender girl, meaning a boy who thinks he's a girl. The case began in 2021 after the Indiana Department of Child Services received two reports of abuse or neglect, both related to the teen's transgender identity. One accused the parents of verbally and emotionally abusing their child because they did not accept that the teen was transgender. So the Supreme Court thinks it's okay for the state to take a child who has gender dysphoria away from their parents. What's next? The state taking custody of children who are forced to take baths, forced to pray or eat their veggies by their evil Christian parents? But the court wasn't done, not by a long shot. The court's latest DEI hire, Associate Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, you know, the justice who absolutely has no clue what a woman is, well, apparently she doesn't know what the Constitution is either. On Tuesday, she was hearing oral arguments of a Missouri case regarding social media censorship, which came from the government's pressuring of social media outlets to suppress information during COVID, opinions the government did not support, you know, like masks don't work if you wear them like a chin diaper. Anyway, Justice Jackson, who has been one of the dumbest justices ever, stated, and this is a real quote, not one I made up, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Um, yeah, you moron. That's the entire point of the Bill of Rights. The government, it tells the government what it cannot do. The First Amendment literally prevents Congress from abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Kara, I hope you don't like voting too much because women voting, that certainly hamstrings my ability to influence elections. And black folk, I hope you enjoy being a free citizen while it lasted. That hamstrings racists who have equal rights under the law, according to KBJ. I mean, we seriously aren't that far away from this being the case. Moving to my home state of Illinois, at a time when the Biden regime is doing everything it can to take guns away from law-abiding American citizens, a Illinois judge wants illegal aliens to have them. Yep, my everything is stupid army, illegals can have guns in Illinois. And now the president has been set nationally. An Obama-appointed judge dropped gun charges against an illegal alien, dismissing illegal possession of a firearm charges against Herbito Cabrillo Flores, who was in the U.S. illegally. The judge, a woman called Sharon Johnson Coleman, stated that, again, a real quote, the court finds Carabillo Flores' criminal record containing no improper use of a weapon, as well as the nonviolent circumstances of his arrest, do not support finding that he poses a risk to public safety, such that he cannot be trusted to use a weapon responsibly and should be deprived of his Second Amendment right to bear arms and self-defense. Whew! There's a lot to unpack here. And it goes to show that the government's attempt to legislate the elimination of gun violence is stupid. 